Who doesn't love fried chicken? The combination of a brown, crispy crust surrounding moist, juicy meat is pretty much irresistible. Let's explore the science behind this unique method of cooking. Frying involves submerging food in oil that is much hotter than the boiling point of water. As soon as the food is submerged in the oil, water from the food begins to boil due to the high oil temperature. The steam generated by the boiling water pushes both further into the food, cooking it, as well as out into the oil. It is this steam that causes the bubbles that are the hallmark of frying food. As long as there is moisture in the food, bubbles will continue to be formed. This is important as the jets of steam pushing outwards from the food surface prevent oil from entering the food during frying. This is why food fried in oil that is too cool gets very greasy. There is not enough outward steam pressure to prevent oil uptake. Food to be fried is often coated in a batter, which protects the food from overcooking as well as adding a flavorful, crunchy exterior. Batters contain starch and water, which allows for the gelatinization of the starch and the development of the crunchy exterior. Eggs are sometimes also added to give more structure to the batter and to allow it to better adhere to the food. The whites, in particular, due to their high protein and low fat content, add crispness to the final product. Inclusion of the yolks leads to a less crispy but richer batter. As the oil is much hotter than the boiling point of water, it quickly dehydrates the surface, elevating the temperature above 100 C and allowing browning to happen quickly. As the food expels more and more steam into the oil, the dry zone moves inwards. The interior of the food is cooked by steaming. This is why fried food is brown and crispy on the outside and moist in the interior. As frying oil is used, it begins to break down and eventually go rancid. The most common sign of this is off aromas of the oil, such as fishiness. This breakdown is caused both by the heating of the oil itself, which can break bonds in the oil molecule, but also by the water that is released by foods as they fry. Particles of the food which fall off during frying can cause oil breakdown to occur rapidly, which makes pot frying difficult to do for prolonged periods. Industrial fryers have a collection tube that allows solid particles to sink to the bottom away from the heating element, where they cause much less damage to the oil itself, prolonging its usable life. Frying can also be done under pressure. Pressure raises the temperature at which all liquids boil. The oil temperature is not affected by the pressure as it's not at its boiling point. However, under pressure, water boils at 120 C, meaning that the interior of the food is steamed at 120 C rather than 100 C. This cooks the interior more quickly and can tenderize tougher cuts during frying as elevated temperatures speed collagen breakdown into gelatin. Regardless of frying method, an important step in the frying process is the removal of surface oil from the food immediately after it comes out of the fryer. This can most easily be done by shaking the food in the fryer basket. This prevents the food from becoming overly greasy. The steam escaping during frying creates pockets and crevices in the surface of the food into which oil can be pulled by capillary action. As the food cools, gases filling these pockets contract, creating a suction force. This suction pulls oil from the surface into the food, making it greasy. Minimizing the amount of oil on or in contact with the surface reduces this uptake. Fried food should never be drained directly on paper towels, as these provide a reservoir of oil which can be sucked back into the food by capillary action or suction. A raised rack is a much better place to hold fried items, as the oil can drain away and it is not in direct contact with the surface of the food.